The diagnosis of a memory problem and the, and the cause of that memory problem uh, consists of a history and physical, so gathering you know, how the memory problem started, what was the first symptoms that were noticed, when did it start, what are some of the things you know, you've noticed. It's very important to have a family member or someone who knows the person very well at the initial visit because they present what they know to be true, which may or may not be totally accurate. At that time, we also do cognitive screening. If there's any lab work that needs to be done or any imaging that has been done or may need to be done. What you're looking for are other reasons that would account for um, memory loss. So things like um, a thyroid disorder, a, a vitamin B12 deficiency, um, you know, and, and then as far as imaging goes, you know, what's happening inside your skull? Has there been a stroke that you don't know that's happened? Or do you have some significant cerebrovascular disease that was not known? Um, so looking for other reasons. Diagnosing dementia is not just one thing. You know, so when you're looking at kidney function, you can draw blood and there's a number and you can, you know, then say, oh, yes, you have a kidney problem or no, you don't have a kidney problem. Um, but with dementia, it's much more difficult. So it's all pieces of the puzzle that we put together to give our best diagnostic impression of what the problem is and how best to treat it. Just the fact that they've come here they have concerns and they have some knowledge that there is something going on. So, you know, getting a diagnosis is important. A lot of people want to know um, because it helps to uh, help them with future planning and make d other decisions. So if, if you find that you have a life-limiting disease, you know, most of us would probably do something a little different than what we're doing currently. So it is important for people to get the diagnosis and then again to do everything, you know, you can to be the best that you can be for as long as you can be. When someone is diagnosed with a dementia and there are uh, needs that are identified, so um, one of the things that I will do is try to get the person connected with our social worker um, and to get them set up with our memory care clinic, which is a interdisciplinary team to help be very proactive and to help get people connected with community services and community resources. Um, so depending on the situation, sometimes I will get our social worker involved immediately, um, but most of the time, we will get someone set up with an appointment with the memory care clinic. The diagnosis process first is established by the story. So you establish a story that fits with a clinical presentation with memory loss, with cognitive dysfunction, with functional changes. So in the beginning you might say it's age-related memory loss or it might be just mild cognitive impairment. And that's a statistical differentiation between how much memory loss you've had and how much functional change you've had. And then evidence of progressive decline of cognitive abilities that has impacted the quality of life and function, that's dementia. So now we say it's dementia. The pattern of the dementia, if there is, for example, gait abnormality, a lot of decision making from the beginning, you think maybe of vascular dementia or Parkinsonian dementia. But let's say in the absence of any other collateral features, such as physical weakness uh, or stroke-like symptoms, then more than likely, this is going to be of the Alzheimer's type. So you do your evaluation with the appropriate imaging studies, with the appropriate laboratory studies to rule out certain conditions, and you present to the family that on day one, you say, this is what I'm concerned about. We do a bedside neuropsychological test, and you know, it's the Montreal Cognitive Assessment Scale. And if they score poorly, then we're highly suspicious that this is dementia. Let's say they score very well, 
but there's still strong concern about memory loss. However, the individual was a professor and can do this test with ease. Then I send them to a neuropsychological assessment which measures their cognitive abilities relative to their peers, to their age, to the people who have the same education. And then I get an assessment that there is an obvious decline in this individual that seems to have occurred over a period of time. This doesn't happen overnight. And that would establish also a diagnosis of dementia. And then based on the pattern of what is lost, uh, you know, short-term memory, visual-spatial relationship, uh, visual memory, based on that pattern, we can then say this is more likely Alzheimer's or not. Alzheimer's disease is a pathological diagnosis where you take a piece of the brain and that's how you make the diagnosis. So, we establish the diagnosis based on the story, that the pattern of progression is similar to what we see with other patients with Alzheimer's disease, as opposed to a stepwise progression like you see with strokes, the absence of other features like Parkinson's disease or hallucinations like Lewy body disease, and absence of any other medical condition that we can identify.